Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Art Set Play, and today I am going to talk to you about the top 10 things that I learned while going to art school. But first, let me tell you a little bit about this piece that I'm working on. This is just a quick little mixed media illustration that I did in my sketchbook. I just wanted to do something for fun, play around with gouache and markers. So that's what you will see here. Okay, so I am in my senior year of my art program, and that has had me thinking a lot about what I have gained from going to art school. And so I jotted down a few things, and I thought that it would be fun to share them with you. They're not in any particular order. It was just how it came out when I was organizing my thoughts. So number one, new mediums. As you know, I love to play around with new mediums, and I do a lot of research on my own as to the different kinds of art media that is out there so that I can experiment and play. But a few things came up while I was in school that I don't think that I would have ever learned had I not gone to school. One of them was plaster sculpture. And I will pop up a picture here of one of my favorite sculptures that I did while in school. It's actually a casting of my body. It's named The Crone. And this was a bed sheet dipped in plaster and then draped over me and then there was plaster of Paris that I used to build up the layers. So it's actually kind of a collaborative project between me and one of my closest friends and my professor because they had to drape the sheet over me and help me with that aspect of it and then I went in and did the coloration and did the additional layers to create more wrinkles and things. So this is something that I would have never done at home. I would have never known anything about it. It's just not in the realm of my experience. And so now that I know about it, it's something that I might try to do at home later on. But I didn't know much about sculpture in general. I had only ever played around with clay, mostly like brown clay that I found when I was a kid and things like that. But I had never worked with plaster sculpture. So that's something that I'm not sure I would have learned otherwise. Another medium that I got to play around with in school that I don't think that I would have had a full experience with was printmaking. I wouldn't ordinarily have any access to a printing press or anything like that, so I don't know as though I would have ever learned Italio printmaking if I hadn't gone to school. I had done a little bit of printmaking as a kid, mostly Linoka, and it was, you know, just in junior high, but I really didn't have any experience with that, and I, I don't think I would have necessarily known to look at that field of study on my own. So I was pretty happy about that as well. The next thing on my list, number two, is art history. So of course, there's a lot of information out there that I can find online on my own. And I did do a lot of studying before I went to school on art history because I love art and I like to study all aspects of art. But there is something to be said from learning from experts in that field. And I have had exposure to some pretty good experts as my professors, people that have gone all over the world and have experienced things. My my first history professor actually goes on archaeological digs every summer, and he has been in the business for a very, very long time. And his father was an art historian. And so... He is very highly experienced. And then I have a newer professor now, and she's just wonderful. Like, you can just tell she's really passionate about the subject and really knows her stuff, and that bleeds through to me. And so I have been able to learn in a way that I don't think I would have had I not had exposure to these experts in the field. And they kind of told me where to look and how to look at things. And so that has really helped as far as my studies go with art history. And I feel like I have a much more well-rounded art history base. I mean, of course, I'm no expert in it, but I definitely know a lot more now than I would have if I had to learn it on my own. But that's just my personal experience. Number three, how to look at the work of contemporary artists. So... I was primarily self-taught before I went to school. I had very little exposure to the art world, and this kind of goes along with the art history aspect as well. And I didn't really know where to look. I see artists online all the time. Most of my sources are like Facebook and YouTube, and that's a great place to start. I mean, that's how you get to know other artists and see what other people are doing. But I didn't know much about artists who were showing in galleries and museums and people who were doing community projects and, th you know, artwork to try and change the world and just people who are award-winning artists 
I didn't really know much about the contemporary art world in general. And so that is something that I have learned a lot from my professors. My drawing professor is very, very big on looking at contemporary artists and learning how to be inspired by them. And of course, by inspiration, it's not copying the artist, but it's just seeing what you love about that artist and seeing if there's something that they're doing that you can bring back to your own work, which I always recommend anyways. But this has just opened up my view like my world view much has opened up a lot since being in school and in reference to what other artists out there are doing. Number four, drawing from a live model. I don't think I would have ever drawn a nude person in person if I hadn't gone to school. There is no scenario in my mind that I can picture hiring a model and having them come to my studio and get nude so that I can draw them or even having a friend do it. It's just not something that I think I would have ever done had I not gone to school. And drawing from a live model is definitely different. It's a different skill set than drawing from a photograph. And I've drawn from photographs my whole life. And I have drawn... I shouldn't say I've never drawn live models. When I was a kid, I drew everything that was around me. And even still, like if I'm sitting somewhere like in a cafe or something, I'll draw people in my sketchbook. So I have drawn live people before, but not to this capacity and never nude. So it's definitely given me a whole different set of skills when it comes to drawing a model and when it comes to drawing nude models, of course, and the human body in general. It's helped me with anatomy. It has helped me with shading. It has helped me with proportion. And so that is definitely something that I don't think I would have done and I wouldn't have gotten the experience of had I not gone to school. Number five, collaboration. As I mentioned before, I am somebody who is mainly self-taught. I didn't have a lot of exposure to the art world before school. I mostly learned from other artists through books and interacted with other artists online. So I never really had to collaborate with people and in school, you collaborate a lot. There's a lot of different projects. Sometimes you have to do a full group project with the whole class. Sometimes you're partnered up. And you're just bouncing ideas off each other and reflecting, regardless of if you're actually working on a project together or not. And so this has really given me the experience of working with others. And I think that this will help me later on if I want to do a larger project and I want to collaborate with somebody else. The skills that I have learned from working with my classmates will be able to translate into that. Number six, ways to work with the community. So this kind of goes along with collaboration. I never really knew how robust an art community could be in within such small communities. I am part of an art association that I have been a part of long before I went to school, but I never really knew what to do with it. I would enter some shows and things like that, but for the most part, I haven't really jumped in and become part of that art association. And I think after school, when I have time, I definitely plan to become more part of the community around me. And there are many ways that artists can help their community and to help beautify their community and there's many ways they can collaborate with art associations or different town associations to make their downtown better. I know that my friend, one of my close friends, Marcia, she's another student as part of her internship when she was in school, she started an art walk at a local festival in her hometown and it has now become, you know, a yearly thing. And this festival is a huge festival. It's the Moxie Fest. It's the one that I have been a part of. Then they didn't have art in it, and she brought art to her town. So these are things that I never really thought about before going to school. But again, my drawing professor is very big on community and very big on getting artists out there and artists helping their community. And that is something that I don't think I would have ever thought to do. I have always felt very isolated as an artist, and so going to school and meeting these people and seeing that these things are options has really, really opened up a lot of opportunities for me that I hope to take advantage of and hope to look into when I have graduated and I have more time to be a part of my community. Number seven, how to write artist statements and resumes. So there are a lot of templates online that can help with this. And there is a great book called Artwork 
which I am I have been reading for one of my classes, my senior seminar classes, that you can buy on your own. It's not very expensive. I will link it in the description below. It has the templates for all of these things. It it shows you, you know, how to write an artist statement and a template for writing your resume, a template for writing invoices, you know, things like that. All the like businessy side of things, but also one of my teachers in particular is very big about teaching us how to learn to write and talk about our art. And that's something that a lot of artists struggle with. The artist statement is a huge struggle. I see people online ask for tips about it all the time when they are getting ready to go into shows. It can be really awkward to have to write about your art. And going to school has really helped me with that because I've had to write about art throughout the whole my whole college career. And so I think that I am better equipped now to write about my own art because I know you know, the terminology to use and more or less what people are looking for. I mean, not that I won't stumble when writing an artist statement. It's still very difficult, but I feel like I'm better equipped now. Number eight, and this is a big one, how to critique and how to be critiqued. So in art school, when you have a project at the end of every project and even in between while you're in the working phases of your project, you have to show your artwork to the whole class and you have to sit there and listen to the whole class talk about your artwork and what can be improved, what they like about it, what they dislike about it. And then you also have to look at other people's art and do the same thing. And so it is the art of constructive mm -hmm. criticism. And it is something that is usually very much lacking online. As most of you know, if you've put your artwork out there, you know that there are some people who are better at, at critiquing. And then there are some people that are just jerks. And then there are some people who just really can't articulate what they're trying to say. And it's, I mean, it's the nature of the beast, but going to school has really helped me learn how to critique other people's artwork better and look better, which helps me actually look at my own work and critique my own work better. But it also, more importantly, has helped me thicken my skin because I have had to expose my artwork to people and sit there in person and listen to people talk about what they think can be improved and can't be improved and what I need to do next. And that experience alone has really, is, I think, will help me for the rest of my working career. Because now I know how to take criticism. I know how to take certain things with a grain of salt. And how to really just take what I can and learn from it. Number nine, how to speak and write about art. And I mentioned this earlier. I've had to learn, you know, when I when I write about my artist statements and resumes, I had to learn how to speak and write about art. And this goes along with being critiqued and critiquing. When you critique somebody, you have to know the proper terminology to do so. And that has really helped me a lot. In the past, before I went to school, I would be in an art show and I wouldn't know what to tell people about my art. I would be so nervous. I could sit there and talk about other people's work all day, but talking about my own has been very difficult. And because I have had to write so much about my art and other people's art and be critiqued, I have learned a lot more about how to speak about my art and, of course, how to write about art. Number 10, discipline and strength. This has, this is the biggest thing that I have learned when being in school. I have learned a lot about myself and what I am capable of and also... I've had to take a lot of classes because I didn't go to an art school. I went to, it's just a, a university that happens to have a really good art program. And so I have had to take a lot of prerequisites that I probably would have never taken if I had a choice. I had to take math. I had to take science. I had to take psychology. Well, actually, I really enjoy psychology. I would have chosen to take psychology classes anyway. But the point is, is that I have learned I have a more well-rounded education because of this college I went to, and I've learned a lot about myself, and I think that I have become a better person. But the discipline, the discipline and the strength that it takes to get through a bachelor's degree, it's a lot. I've had to work a job while doing this. I've had bills to pay. I've had to sacrifice a lot to do what I'm doing, and to get through it has been amazing, and I have learned a ton about myself that I don't know that I would have learned otherwise, or it probably would have taken a lot more 
a lot longer to realize my personal strengths if it hadn't been for school. Okay, so that is it. Those are my top 10 things I learned while going to art school. Later on, after I graduate, maybe I will do another one similar to this. If there's anything that you'd like to know about school that I didn't talk about here, please don't hesitate to ask questions below. School is not for everybody. Every artist has a different path. So I am not in any way saying that in order to be a good artist, you have to go to school. This just happened to be my path. And I, I am happy that I've done it. And I feel like I have grown as a person and an artist because of it. But there are other ways to do that. You can have a great career without school. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media. So check out the links in the description below.